Okay, folks, here we are again. This time, Monday the... Welcome back. I mentioned earlier that I've gotten in the habit where I do not like to paint while I'm on while I'm not on my live show. I'm just usually bored. Well, yesterday I had to break that rule because I had a few moments of, of time. I mean other than the one the the session that we did do. I had some moments of time where I was able to do some painting, but not enough to be worthwhile to go online and get everybody here. Because if I'm going to do some kind of a painting session and it's less than an hour, it really isn't worth even trying to put it out there. And, uh, you know, I had a few moments here and there to be able to do um, what was left to do on this, on this stand. And we did finish up, not only did we finish the hordes, we finished the horde figures, I know they're going to look like crap in here because there's the resolution and the moving pictures or whatever. But the hordes are complete. Uh, I finished the last figures of the hordes and I did uh, gloss coat them and dull coat them and gooped them and put the rocks on them and everything. So what do we have left to do? Uh, just paint the stand, put some tufts on it, and then we're done with this. So what does it mean when this stand is done? Well, we can work on the big guy himself now. Be these figures are left and then the army is complete well kind of uh we don't have the moldavian commander yet it'll be one moldavian stand and we got to have the camp with all the people being stuck on pikes um so anyways we're we made a lot of progress this weekend and we want to continue doing that so uh, the next game session that I have with Mitch, maybe we can use this army. Just saying. Okay, let's see what happens. Let's get a brush. <laughs> it's not in that good of a shape. These are way too nice for this. We gotta get in between the legs of these figures. And as you're painting over this basing material, it is, it is, um, It is abrasive to a degree, so I don't want to use a brush that is going to get severely misshapen or something like that. Yeah, we may need some magic drippings here. So yeah, when this guy's done, uh, Dracula's next. Literally, Dracula is next. We're going to paint him first, then as a two accomplices, because he's going to kind of set the tone for, for everything. Um, you don't want to paint the accomplices and then make them so bright, and you have to outdo uh, the Dracula figure, and this one's not going to work. It's way too, uh, way too together. We're just going to use the in-between the the legs. We're going to do the hard to get to stuff first. And I think I'll use the white color for this, only for the brown color. The other ones are going to be dry brushers, so you don't want to make anything you're going to dry brush any wetter than you need to because the first thing you do is you're going to have to dry it out. So let's see if we can find a corner here that is not consumed by leftover paint. scoop some of this out and we have another chocolate brown otherwise we'd be running a Hobby Lobby like right now they still open yeah they're still open not a Sunday they're open <laughs> Nordic Maelstrom welcome yeah I got close to 80 no no Nordic Maelstrom here that's for sure Just a case of swamp ass. No cool, no no cool breeze either. Just 
just enough lubrication in this paint to be able to get it to spread. All right, let's see if we can adjust this. I almost did this stage last night, but I just ran out of oomph. At about 8.30, I was like done. I got, I've gotten a lot of, I've done a lot of work on these guys this weekend. A lot of, a lot of work, a lot of work for me, a lot of hours. So that's pretty good. Got the near 60 here and expected to get near 70 on Wednesday. Playing havoc with my allergies and sinuses, yeah. Yeah, I don't really have any kind of a, any allergies, but the pollen in the freaking trees, I think it affects all of us, whether we realize it or not. So I think we're all affected by it to some degree. Whether it's, you know, hay fever or not is something different, but. Come on, you can do it, you schmear. I got another full one around here somewhere. This is the one that was really low on, and like, I've got to buy more of this stuff. But you know, I didn't throw it away and immediately started using the new one. So I still got more chocolate brown. But we got a lot of painting done this weekend, so. I'm really wanting to start on another army. <laughs> uh, isn't that always the case? Yeah, I'm just, I don't even want to look through the figures. I don't even want to look through the figures. It's way too much of a tease to. So we got something else that's on order. I placed an order on something I've been talking about getting for a while. And that's some brushes. Some brushes that are not made in somewhere that's oppressive. And, um... I think I found a candidate today, and they should arrive here probably. I'm going to bet on the same damn day that my Essex order gets in, but we're going to do two separate unboxings. That's the case, and we're not going to do them on the same day. I'm not going to post two unboxings on the same day. So the figures were ordered first, so if the figures come in on Wednesday, uh, which is what I expect it to be, um, we'll do them, and then we'll post the brushes on, on uh, Thursday. Twenty to thirty degrees. Swim. I think that affects everybody. I think it affects everybody. Um, well, how does it affect me? I think I get headaches, and I don't realize why I'm getting it. And just kind of like a minor annoying one. Not, I don't know that I've got any anything respiratory, but um, I think it affects everybody. You know, it's kind of like it affects everybody. Like if you go in a room with has a lot of dust. You know, you don't have to have a dust, dust allergy to be like, you know, or, or feel, you know, like your eyes are itchy or something. Uh, anytime I stay in a hotel, hotels, um, I don't care how nice they are, they all have carpeting. And I don't have any carpeting in my house. And, and nor do I have any pets. So I am not used to sleeping in a room and that has carpeting and has no ceiling fans. So it's... Uh, Usually when I wake up the next morning, actually last time I, I stayed at a hotel, that's how I was. I was like, I felt like I was sick. And after about half a day out in the, out in the, out in the environment and went away on its own. I never took anything for it. I don't have any allergies that I know of related to that. So, yeah. You finished painting one of your last 28 millimeter Age of Sigmar units. I have 12 left to paint and a dinosaur. I'm severely allergic to dust, so it sucks year-round. So what's the difference between Age of Sigmar and Warhammer? Is Age of Sigmar almost like more of a warband type game? Or... How is that? I know that one game that everybody speaks, not everybody, many people speak highly of, and of course it was discontinued because it's, you know, Games Workshop, that's what they do, was um, Mordheim. People like Mordheim a lot. 
because it's kind of like you build your little warband thing. You don't have to paint an entire army of whatever it is. You can just build your your warband of, of whatever troops you have. And um, I never played any of that stuff. The only Games Workshop thing I ever played, Hero Quest, I played one game of it. And uh, this guy kind of locally ran one, and he had all the 3D terrain um, for it. That's it. I've never played any anything else. I've never played any of the Warhammer games. Um, they don't really appeal to me, but that's not why I haven't played them. I just, you know, they're um, just in my thing, so. I don't have time for everything, so I'm going to pick and choose. I remember when I first started playing DBA, Warhammer Ancients Battles was really big. So you'd go to Historicon, and there'd be tons of people playing WOB. And then it was like, and I have several of the books, because um, they're beautiful. I mean, what's not to like about, about Games Workshop stuff? Um, other than their policy of just discontinuing. Hey, it's their business. They can do it however you want. I'm just telling you as a consumer and somebody who has, I'm just not willing to have somebody say all this time I've spent doing these, these hundreds of hours just to get the carpet pulled out from under me. Um, it's a more of a warband game. No bases. The bases are round now. I usually don't play the game just like the miniatures. So I paint one of like 12 miniatures to go. Okay. Yeah, well, they have nice sculpting. There's no doubt about that. Um, even when they were a little cruder, and they were called Citadel, you know, in the late 90s, they were the first ones to have that kind of basing. The, you know, the slot base. Everybody else was using, you know, Grenadier and Ralparth and stuff. They were using uh, standard kind of bases. And, um, oh, look, I have one. I actually, I've actually painted a few Games Workshop things, okay? Um, I painted a squad of Imperial Guard because I saw them in a White Dwarf magazine. I really liked them. Now, we're kicking this like 1988. That's about when I probably painted them. 88, 89, 87, 89, something like that. I painted them and I sold them off. They, they look like shit if you saw them now. And another one is, I don't know how I got this, but I have a wolf. And I probably painted this in the 80s also. Ooh, look at the awesome basing I did. Hey, paint it green and dip it in Woodland Scenics crap. And uh, yeah, back in the day, well, they probably still do this now. Games Workshop, 1988. And uh, GW Game, 1988. And here it tells you what it is. Wolf. And I always liked that because if you looked at the... I remember when the Citadel first came with their big catalog, they had like pages and pages and they would show, you know, it would say like um, um, Chaos Warriors or whatever, right? And there'd be like 12 figures, but there was only like maybe four figures in the pack. I, I forget exactly what the counts are, but here's all the poses you could possibly have, but you don't know what you're going to get. You know, you don't, you don't know which four you're going to get or what have you. But I always thought that was really cool. Like, it would tell you what the things are. And in, in that case, they, all these would say wolf. But there would be ones that would say different things, you know. And I always got a kick out of that. Um, that wolf is as old as me. Huh. Before WAP, the guys were going crazy for WAP. What's WAP? The reason I don't play their games, the sculpts are nice. That's the reason I don't play their games. I play WAB as a fun game, but 20 is going out of favor with me. Yeah. I would love to play Saga, but I'd want to do Saga in 15s. Um, and I don't know, maybe I wouldn't like Saga, you know, but I like the concept of it. I like the concept of rolling these dice and you have to create what orders you're going to do. I like that. I like games where... You can see everything as the player. Like, nothing's hidden from you. There's no fog of war as the player. But your figures have a lot of fog. Like, they don't listen to you. It's almost like you're like some demigod saying, Idiot! You need to move forward! There's somebody right in front of you! And your figures are going like, Do what? You know, I think that that makes a better game so that 
um, you're getting the entire picture as a player. And um, instead of creating either a, a, some divider where you, you set up and you can't see the other guy, instead of hindering you as the player, I like your, your figures being be hindered and them not listen to, listening to you. I don't know if that makes any sense. I've played them both. And after playing um, the first method many times, it just it consumes a lot of time. You're not seeing everything that's going on. And it's just more fun to experience all the tribulations and stuff. So actually, Sam, I did a saga 15s, 20 millimeter sagas I painted this winter. Yeah. Yeah, and you can paste them on pennies, you know. But the thing is, is you got to build stuff for both sides, but I don't know. I like um, Lion Rampant. I'd play Lion Rampant with these figures. I wouldn't even rebase them, you know, because units are like six figures. So three stands is one unit. You take casualties, you take a base off. That would work. I played, I played Lion Rampant three times, I think. I liked it. You know, it's kind of basic, but it's really easy to add special rules for, you know, different troop types. Um, relatively easy. And I wouldn't be so worried about playing it for points. In other words, you know, I, I, I'm, you don't have to make, what is it? Units have to be either 12 or six units, six figures or 12s or whatever. You could do 10, whatever. You're just doing a pickup game and use it for for other stuff, you know, make the sides unbalanced and then switch sides, you know, play once as the Normans and play the other side as the other guys, you know. Um, definitely interested in Saga 2, but I have the same problem I do now. If I want to play it, I either have to supply everything and go out and make new friends. Yeah, there just aren't that many friends out there, you know. A lot of people just... A lot of people just aren't interested in doing this. And the people that are interested, some people just aren't worth playing games with. I'm not talking about you guys. You know who I'm talking about. Win at all cost, assholes. I don't play games with those folks. You know, or, you know, or a nice guy that's fun to play with. But, you know, he only showers at once every fortnight and doesn't wear deodorant on that day. Like, I have no tolerance for that. I'd rather not game. I'd rather not game than game with than have to game with people like that, you know? So, Rick, you got any people that come over to your house that uh, you've had to give them uh, a clue to hear some deodorant for you? <laughs> I, I look forward, like when I come home from work, I look forward to showering. That's like the first thing I like to do. I like to shower and change clothes. I don't like being nasty. I think we're gonna need more of this stuff here. Not using deodorant is not an excuse. It they make it in everyone's size. Don't order a medium deodorant, right? Get an extra large one. <laughs> Forget those one at all cost guys. Yeah, I hate going to game store because that reason. Too many never use deodorant. It, how? How is that possible? Fortunately, I'm unable to breathe through my nose. It just shouldn't be, man. It's okay for the kids to be nerdy or whatever. You know, you need to turn that shit off when you need to when you leave the store. You know, but but worst of all is a freaking. I just I can't deal with a freaking. Stinky shit, man. One, one of the conventions that I went to, this guy that I frequently see at conventions, he's like a really sharp guy. I mean, guys, you know, if he did an IQ test, he'd just blow me away, okay? I don't care. I'm not jealous because, you know, he's too specialized. 
So he's a really smart guy, but he can't wear deodorant. So what good does it do you? I mean, how smart do you have to be, you know? I mean, I'm not a PhD. I'm not, you know, a, a master chess player. But I know how to put on deodorant. Let's just say I've had to wash the dice after someone in particular used them. Their spouse tried to make the excuse that they didn't grow up with good hygiene, so they still don't. Ha, huh, cracking you up already. Yeah, I'm not the smartest guy out there. And that's okay. We're not all programmed differently. Some people are really smart and can't freaking paint. You know? Um, I make the comment all the time. My wa We'll watch something like, I don't know, Super Bowl or something like that. And somebody will make some kind of a comment like, man, look at that guy do make that catch. I said, yeah, but he doesn't know how to play DBA, dumbass. You know, or some, we're all specialized to some degree or another, you know, and, um, you know, we're not all cut from the same cloth, just like we're not all good at certain jobs. There's certain jobs I wouldn't be good at. I mean, there's lots of things I wouldn't be good at and that's okay. Um, there's people that I'd probably be super jealous of how good they paint, but they, they may not wash. So what good does it do? You know? So Yeah. Cracking you up already. Well, I just, I call it like I see it, man. I even thought going one time to a gaming convention and buying, if you go to the grocery store, they have that section for the little travel deodorants and they're little, they're, they're, what do I have that would be that size? They're very small and they're like a dollar a piece. Just go in and freaking hand them to people. Just don't even tell them. You find somebody stinky, just throw one of them at them, you know, <laughs> but they wouldn't get the clue, you know, it's. You got a PhD in smart astry. Oh yeah, don't we all? Mr. James, hello from Sydney. Good day. To be honest, I needed the reminder of the shower. Really? You just gave me the wrong people to put up with that. I wouldn't put up with that. I'd just tell you, dude, you need to shower. The strong stench of onion. It didn't happen. I don't know how someone gets used to smelling that. It never washes his hands. I go a lot, I go outside a lot for work and I do a lot of writing, um, you know, just with a pen or whatever. And, and there's nothing worse than writing when your cans aren't clean, right? So every time I go outside to check something, I come in and I wash my hands. It's just have it. Go to the bathroom and wash your hands. I mean, I'm, at work, I drink a lot of liquids. So I'm probably in the bathroom more than once an hour. Once an hour? Yeah, once an hour, I'd say. I'm washing my hands at least. Once an hour, maybe every, and I'm not a, like a germaphobe. It's just habit. I don't like having dirty hands. I like eating stuff like ribs and stuff like that, but I'm not a fan of eating in a restaurant because you got that shit all over your hands. You know, at home, that's, you know. Saga looks pretty cool, but seems kind of expensive to get into. I have some of the 2D terrain for it, though. Do you play Magic Gathering Lick? Good morning. I'm still getting my coffee and have... Leo Sayer bed hair. I have no idea who the hell Leo Sayer is, but I'm about to. Let's open up another window and see what kind of a <laughs> see what kind of a loon this is. Oh, that's not the button I wanted to press. Leo Sayer. English singer songwriter. Oh, you know he's gonna. Oh dear God. Wow. He looks like a cross between Brian May and uh, the guy from uh, that John C. Riley or whatever guy. The guy from Wreck It Ralph. <laughs> He has big hair. Yeah, I'm due for a haircut as it is. I can't handle it touching my ears, and it's already touching my ears. I gotta wait till we gotta wait till the weekend. And the swan song of leaving that game. I don't like the Wizards of the Coast and their political bull. Political bull. I'm removing all their products from my life. Ooh. I don't understand why 
companies get political. Just here's your products, you know. What do you do? We're here to make money and sell things. Cool. I, you know. I don't know. Uh, you know. I don't understand why companies got to be involved in that stuff. I know there was something around the web that I heard about a couple of months ago about something political in games. I don't remember what what the hell it was. Was it something with Gary Gygax's son or something? I don't know. I'm not. I'm not into that. I'm. I'm not into that stuff. I. Uh, I'd rather just. You're not going to convince anybody. So like, why even bring it up? I mean, why? Is, how, many, how many people have been like? Oh, I never looked at it that way. I. I am going to. You know, do something or another. You know. I mean, we're all adults. We've already decided what kind of a person we're going to be, you know. And I don't have any regrets about who I am, you know. Hey, Night Crew, Mr. Patriot, welcome back. They support history deletion. SJW cracked, actively conducted predatory tactics on the players that gave long laundry list of bull crap. History deletion. History should never be deleted. History should never be deleted, even the, especially the bad stuff. You can't let, you can't forget stuff like that, man. It's weird because if you wanted a woke RPG, I think there are many with a granular emphasize all kinds of different things in your jam. There are a lot of issues around race, gender, and demi humans, kind of denigrating if you're in a minority. Huh. Well, I'm old school, so I. My favorite humor, I love ethnic humor. And I don't mean anything by it. I don't dislike anybody because of what they're from. But that stuff's funny. That's what I grew up with. I grew up with Don Rickles and stuff like that. And, you know, we just need to laugh at ourselves. And, uh, you know, you don't pick where you're hatched and you don't pick who your mother is. But uh, it's fun to laugh about it. And um, I guess I've got thick skin and I don't get offended by stuff. Things and I, I love that kind of stuff. I like, you know, stuff like uh, one of you guys, one of you British guys recommended. Um, who was it that they recommended to me? What's the? Well, I know who he is. I just can't think of what his name is right now. That's the new normal. Can't think of people's names. Well, you know, if if I, you know, if I was thinking about him all day long, I could. Um, Jimmy Carr. And I love that kind of stuff. Although he's, he's a bit, he's a bit too sexual. You know, it's funny, but okay, it gets old. But I love the ethnic humor stuff. Um, and okay, well, that's not popular. Okay. So, I mean, I don't mean anything by it. You know. Um, <laughs> as, as Luke would say in one of our games, we dislike people from all places. You know. Uh, just be happy you're a historical gamer because a lot harder to politicize paradoxically. Yeah, like I said, all these, you know, I, I love playing my Spanish, you know, the, my, my people. But they did horrible things, but so did everybody else. You know, it's not like I'm justifying doing that kind of stuff nowadays. But, you know, bad shit happened, you know. Um, yeah. You can all turn me off in the game. I quit play our versions and like that. Orcs as stand-ins for people of color thing was so... What? Orcs as stand-ins for people? That just doesn't make any sense. They're green. Or I'm guessing... I don't know. Jim's alcove is threatening to do an online BECMI campaign. Yeah, GM Alco. I don't know what that guy's real name is. You know, GM Alco, GM Fritz. Uh, all the other kind of names. I just use my real name to hell with it. You want to steal my identity? Go right ahead. I'll stay here. I'll, I'll, I'll go to prison and paint. That's what you get to do in prison, right? Oh, wait, no. <laughs> I'm English. Irish, Scots, and Welsh. Every morning I punch myself in the baby maker. I love the hearing those. I love hearing those, uh, all those little, 
all those people that are all neighbors and don't make the funny jokes at each other. They're trying to say the orcs were the African Americans of the game? That's crazy. They don't even look like people. Ah. See, this is what happens when this is what happens when you win the Cold War. We don't have any real problems. You know, they're just inventing problems. We didn't have these problems in the 80s. What the hell happened? <laughs> oh, man. Orcs aren't even human. That, does, that doesn't make any sense. I could see maybe if they were upset that no, I don't see how they would be upset. They could just say, well, there's human um, people of color, but there aren't any orcs people of color. So they need to be like separate races for the orcs or some bullshit like that. But it never occurred to me. I don't know. <laughs> uh, he also claimed that the term racial trait or race in general is a fantasy. And a fantasy world is offensive. Oh, well. Nobody gets to tell me what I think is offensive. I'm really not offended by much. You know what is offensive? It's offensive. And this doesn't necessarily go for the United States. This could go for the UK. I think I'd feel the same way if I was a, a UKian. Um, if you don't like the country you live in, Freaking leave. Unless nobody wants to take you, you know. Um, when I was a kid, there weren't people that actively hated... Well, I don't know. Maybe they just weren't bold. If you that actively hated the United States and still lived here, you know. And I'm not saying this is the best place in the world. Well, I'm just saying that, you know, there's other places that I would have the same attitude with, you know. If you don't like Italy, don't go live there. Get the hell out, you know. <laughs> it just didn't happen, you know. I don't know. It's a game, folks. It's a game. I think there's a lot of similarities that people have throughout the world. So that's why I don't agree with my friend of mine that hated everything French, you know, because he didn't like French people. It's like... Look, they're not all the same. You know, not all Americans are from New York. Otherwise, I wouldn't want to be known as an American. Any people from New York are watching this and you're offended. Well, you know, your people up there, you need to do a better job of, hey, there's dumbass, big mouth rednecks in this state, you know. I don't like them either. <laughs> uh, it offends me. People who either tell me I'm offended or try to be offended on my behalf. I don't know that everybody's been offended on my behalf. Yeah. <laughs> Your miniature fluid.
Everybody has their pet peeve of things they don't like. And then we all have Some people like to get offended. I don't get offended by anything. But what pisses me off is when somebody wants to question me. Oh. Oh. And when my daughter was little, we had a, a friend of ours that likes doing geocaching. You guys, any of you guys know what geocaching is. You go on web or use a phone and GPS to locate these, these places where things are hit, I should say, things of no value are hidden. And there might be a little scrap of paper saying, you know, Kilroy was here and, you know, maybe there's a little dice or there's something that you take away and you put something back. Just kind of like a fun, you know, scavenger hunt thing. But they're hidden in places that if somebody's looking for them, it looks like you're stashing drugs or something to the untrained eye, right? Well, considering I've never done anything like that, like stashing drugs or anything, I don't want to be questioned. And um, I think we were in, we weren't on somebody's property because that's a no-no. It was something that was kind of in a common area. And um, with my daughter and this person came up and wanted me to explain what I was doing there. And after doing that, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to, um, I'm going to get into some kind of an argument continuing to do this. So I'm not going to do this anymore because that's my pet peeve is being questioned. Because I don't like being questioned by somebody who has, you know, it's like, well, hold on a second. Let's pull our records and see who should be, who should be questioning who there. Um, so that's the thing that, that's the thing that pisses me off. You know, some people don't, uh, some people don't like to get in. Uh, my picture, my painting action is outside the top of the, aha, okay. There we go. How about that? Sorry about that. Painting action. Is anyone interested in the Italian Wars of the Renaissance? It's my wet dream. That's that's my period that I like. But there's nothing out there yet that really tickles my fancy rule-wise. So It's like when I researched the Mahdi's army, I found out they carried a years-long river insurgency instead of just being raving sore loons. Do the research. Pay the respect. That's right. It's it's interesting to learn about things. You know? Never heard the term sword loon before. Have to remember that one. <laughs> Nordic DBA 3.0. The list at the end. The Ordnance Gondata Germans the best. Uh... Debating between time wars or resistance for the Hundred Years' War is my next quote here. Everybody does Hundred Years' War. Uh, oh, it's what you just said, James L. What was your age of discovery? You want to paint a lens neck? Furiosa is supposed to be good. It is. It's just a lot of figures. It just it's too many figures for me. It's too many. I I like my my lens neck turned out really well that I use in my. My um, my German my German army. Let's go ahead and put these guys down. Everybody has their pet peeve. Some people always have to be right. I don't want to. I don't like arguing with people. You know, I was on a web page just yesterday uh, on Facebook, and I made some kind of a comment, and the person wanted to get offended by what it was, and it was something ridiculous. It was, um, I posted a picture and they wanted to get offended by uh, something the picture wasn't even referenced to. So I don't even bother responding to him. I just blocked the person. It's like, oh, you're one of those. You do not exist. I love ignoring the living shit out of somebody. Like, you're not my, you're not worth, I don't know who you are and, you know, we'll never have a conversation again. Your keyboard commando. That's that's a crazy web page, man. People argue about shit all the time. That's the James Bond web page. Man, there's some arguing mother effers on there. You know, like you just say, like, I don't 
when I put post something, I don't go, hey, what you say is stupid. This is the real thing that's good. I just put, hey, this is what I like. And if somebody comes after you for saying what you like, they could just go to hell, you know, because I don't go, I don't denigrate what somebody else's opinion is. That's all it is. It's just somebody else's opinion. <sighs> Anyone in the base of uh, Iris Elba is the Black Prince. Uh, Adiris Elba. I like Adiris Elba. So you're a member of that page too. <laughs> Fuck the base man. I like Adiris Elba. Did you watch the thing that... Um, he did, um, it's called, it's a Netflix movie called, I'm, I'm getting terrible about names. Well, I've only saw it one time. It's the one where he's the warlord and he's recruiting the kids in Africa. That's a freaking great movie. Um, Kingdom with no name, something like that. I don't know what it is. That's a good. That's a good one. I saw that a while ago. I like him. I like him. All right. Oh, this is interesting. Looks like this magnet isn't attached all the way. I've actually never had that happen. I'm going to have to have a word with Ken Litko. No, looks like I just fixed it. I was just mentioning the other day that I've never had a magnet come off of the back. This detective show is very good, but they spin shows too much now. Got very silly fast, like Sherlock. I just don't... I don't watch shows. I just don't... Somebody said... I forget who it was. Somebody was made a comment on one of my videos. Says, "Man, how do you get so much stuff done, man? You have a family and you have all this." I said, "Well, you realize I don't watch any television and watch no sports. Okay, so most people watch a couple hours TV a day plus sports. Just spend that time on your hobby, you know." He's very charismatic and Jave Justin Trudeau's wife. Okay, well, you know more about it than I do. I'm, <laughs> I don't really follow famous people. Um, we, um, the daughter and the boyfriend were at the, earlier yesterday, they were at the house, and, and the kid, the boy had never seen my favorite movie. He'd never seen Raiders of the Lost Ark, um, which is, no son of mine would not have watched Raiders of the Lost Ark. That's, that's the best movie ever made in my book. One of them. I'm sure there's other ones. That, but it's the first one that comes to mind. Anyway, so we're watching it. And if you ever watched an interview with Harrison Ford, he is like an, an asshole. He's like, I wouldn't want that guy living anywhere near me. He, you know, he plays two of the coolest characters. But he's... A damn good actor because in real life he's just freaking weird, man. He's just weird. So, <laughs> just totally weird. So, yeah, I don't follow famous people, you know. Famous people are, they're odd and they get into Holly weird and they get around a lot of another odd, weird people and, like, well, you know, they just, their weirdness multiplies. I don't want them near him. I don't want them near my family or anything. Sort them out, Tony. <laughs> no, he plays some of the coolest guy. I mean, who the hell doesn't like Indiana Jones and Han Solo? I would say that Han Solo is even a cool. Well, not the not the new Han Solo that you know in the new movie. I think he's even a cooler character than Indiana Jones. You know, but the guys. I wouldn't want him any... I mean, he's weird. Oh, well. <laughs> I guess that's why they call them act, actors. But no, I don't want to meet any famous people.
But we the other night we finally got around to we've been talking about doing this for a while is watching all the Bond movies in order, and you know I've seen them all except like three, the new one and two other ones, and I haven't exactly narrowed down exactly which ones they are. Um, well, I haven't seen Goldeneye. I haven't seen. It wasn't like I avoided them. I just I haven't gotten around to see them. I haven't seen the newest one that you either love it or hate it, which most people seems like they hate it. Um, and I've never seen Quantum of Solace, and I've never seen Goldeneye, and I haven't seen. I may not have seen one of the Dalton ones. I may not have seen Living Daylights, but I've seen all the other ones, um, and. Um, you know, my daughter, of course, hadn't seen... Well, I've shown her two of them out of order. And um, so we're like, let's just watch them. Let's just watch them in order. So we watched the first one, which I had done, I guess, a really good job of selling it to my daughter that it was really boring. So she ended up not being bored with it. <laughs> it, wasn't, it was actually better than I remember it being. Um, but I had a really low opinion of it because of how slow it was, the very first one, Dr. No. And... Um, so yeah, we're planning on going through all of them. It's going to take probably a year because we're only going to watch one a week. Watch them with my mom and my brother, and uh, you know, and was it Debbie? Dooms developed a sudden speech impediment. <laughs> I wonder how many college students decide to get in archaeology because of Raiders. You know, I hate being hot, so I would have loved to have been a... I was really into dinosaurs, but, you know, I don't know that I want to... I want to work somewhere. As, if I'm going to college, I'm going to work somewhere. As in co I'm, if I'm going to go into college, I'm going to somewhere there's air conditioning. George Lazenby Connery, or get the fuck out. I've only seen the, I've, I've seen most of the movies only once, most of them. Now, I'll be honest with you, I think a lot of it has to do with when you grew up, so Roger Moore is my boy, and I pretty much like him in anything, so that doesn't mean I dislike the other people, I just, that's who I go to, you know, and they're funny movies, you know, so that's, you know, I don't know, that's what I grew up with, so, um... Lazenby? I gotta watch that one again. I just think he was the, just from recollection, he was a, fr well, first of all, that movie has some ridiculous fashion in it. Um, I don't know. I'll get to it. I'll get to it, what, in about seven or eight weeks. Um, they're classics, though, you know? I mean, everybody was. Everybody in that group is up in arms because they killed the character or whatever. I haven't, still haven't seen the new one. Well, you know, they reinvented the whole character because they started over with Casino Royale. So you can call it whatever you want. They can reiterate. You know, the way they should do it is they just, you can have multiple people. Just give them a different number. It doesn't have to be 007. It could be 009 or 013 or, you know, you could do whatever the hell you want and, you know. You know, when I grew up, the Sean Connery ones were already old, you know, so I don't have a problem with Sean Connery. As a matter of fact, I like him. Um, I, you know, it just, that's not what I grew up with, but I'll watch them and I'll probably like them all to some degree or another. I mean, you know, they're, they're classic stuff. Uh... George Lazenby is bone, how's he? Goldfinger Thunderball. Everybody likes Goldfinger. And I just think... The, I just can't stand the guy that throws the hat. I just can't stand the guy that throws... It just... Well, there's other things I can't stand. But that just seems ridiculous. You know, that just seems ridiculous. Well, a lot of things are ridiculous, but... You know. If somebody's got a hat, I mean, take his hat away from him. You know? What, does he sleep with the damn hat on? You know? You agree by Skyfall. I saw it. But that's why I want to watch them in order. You know? Everybody liked Casino Royale. I just don't like Mickelson. 
I don't like Max Mickelson at all. Um, dog watching doctor? No, actually. Yeah, it's some parts of it. Are, some parts of it are. You know what's are dated. You know what was the worst thing? That one scene, and I'm not going to spoil it for you because you've already seen this at the very beginning. Because um, it starts off with a with a bang, literally assassinate those. Uh, the people that are the spies working in Jamaica, and um, and the woman they shoot the woman, and um, and it's like the the they must have had freaking ketchup for the oh for um, for the blood because that's what it looked like. Everything else was okay with it, you know. Um, I couldn't listen to what's her name anymore. I couldn't listen to Ursula Andress. It was just a little too like. Geez, how blonde are you exactly? But you know, it was it was better than I expected it to be, and I had seen it before, but I saw it once, and I probably saw it twenty years ago, thirty years ago, thirty years ago. How old am I? I probably saw it thirty years ago, maybe even longer than thirty years ago, and um, and I'm making an effort to watch them in order. But I think I will like them all because I am a fan of the character. Um, There, I said it. But I've seen the Roger Moore ones more than any of the other ones because I like Roger Moore. And that's the time period that... I remember they would always play Live and Let Die at night on TBS. And I was like 10 years old or 9 or 10 or 11 years old. And I couldn't stay up late. I'm, my parents were very strict. And I couldn't stay up late. So I never got to see the end of the movie. Same thing with Moonraker. Never saw the space shoot 'em up thing, which probably was a good thing. Because... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I saw it freaking ridiculous, but a lot of movies have the problem that the the antagonist, the bad guy in American speak, the bad guy in American speak isn't evil enough. He just isn't. He's just cast incorrectly, regardless of what the plot is. Regardless of what the plot is, um, they just. Most of them are really weak. So I have a, a problem with movies where the bad guy just isn't bad guy enough. As I, I grew up in a very black and white type thing. Like the bad guy is like extra bad. Like that's, I mean, I, that's what I want. Bad guys are, what are they? They're either communists or freaking Nazis. Or, you know, those people have any redeeming values. I mean, they might be sharp dressers, but they're still freaking evil. You know, demons. Not that I watch any, you know, any kind of possessing stuff. But, you know, really like... Not like, well, this guy is just misunderstood. No. Bad guy's like freaking bad. Like no freaking rules, okay? So, you know. <laughs> that's that's what I grew up with. And now everything seems to be shades of gray and, you know. <laughs> uh, not gonna lie. Watch Casino Royale for Eva Green. Eva Green. She doesn't do anything for me. She's odd looking that's i'll leave it at that that's okay hey there's nothing to be ashamed of i've watched things because of somebody that's in a movie no no doubt about that no doubt about that and i don't i don't necessarily dislike whatever the new guy's name is daniel craig i didn't necessarily have a problem with him i just they relaunched the whole thing, and I wish they wouldn't have done... Yeah, you know, I don't know. They're trying to make a buck. You know, I get it. They're trying to make a buck. But the villains... So I want to watch them again, because some people claim... Um, it's really... It's an interesting... It's an interesting group that James bought. Because there's just... There's bitch fest people on there all the time, but... Some people claim that... The best blow fell was Telly Savalas. I just can't imagine Telly Savalas playing a bad guy. So I've seen the movie, but I need to see it again. So I'm looking forward to it and just kind of, you know. I think I will appreciate them all to some degree or another. Because um, like I said, I'm a fan of the series. Um, I just like Moore and I like Moore's one-liners. Sorry. Uh, so I may get offended by a truly evil villain. Well, that's the problem with the world. Uh, Best Buy ever could be Darth Vader. I don't know about that. 
you watch the live action Beauty and the Beast just because of Emma Watson. I don't like her. She bugs me, and I'm not sure why. She bugs me. And she doesn't do a French accent. Like, why isn't somebody who who can fake a French accent play that? It's in freaking France. Or it's supposed to be. Um, so, best... All right, here we go. Best Bond villain. Who is it? Or best actor. The best actor to play a Bond villain, regardless of how good the movie is, or the plot. I freaking... I, I think Zorin is great. He's a freaking Nazi. He's a Nazi kid. And it's Walken. And Walken is just so freaking entertaining to watch. You gotta love him, man. I mean, I thought he was, you know, freaking... I mean, he's half nuts anyways. Um, the Nazi SS guy and Inglorious Bastards. He gets away with it. They don't kill him. I didn't like that movie because a lot of people... And this is really shameful. A lot of people, a lot of what they learn about World War II could be from that movie. I mean, that's really, really shameful. And um, that is just silly. My goodness. If Eva Green is considered attractive, where did it go wrong? She doesn't do anything for me. I wouldn't say she's ugly. She just, I wouldn't do anything for me. She doesn't do anything for me. Yeah. I think Christopher Walken is... And, you know, just because somebody works for one person doesn't work for somebody else. Everybody loves Christopher Lee, and I don't. I don't like Christopher Lee at all. He doesn't do anything for me. I don't care that he was a war hero. You know, that that's... He just doesn't do anything for me. I don't... He's, like, boring, unexciting to watch. So, you know, I tried watching Man with a Golden Gun a couple years ago. I'm, like, between the mirrors... Tattoo and Christopher Lee. I'm like, I just couldn't get into it. But I'm going to watch it again. I'm, I'm giving everything a fair shake. And I think I will find something that I like out of, out of all of them. Um, so. I don't love those cartoony representations of World War II either. That's why I, dis I despise... I de do I despise? That's, that's a little too strong. Because I like all the actors. I like almost all the actors in it. I don't like the guy who plays the German guy. He's creepy. In um, Kelly's Heroes. I like everybody in Kelly's Heroes except the German guy. Um, great cast. I just didn't like the freaking 70s hippie, hippie thing to it. I think it's just, you know, there's a time for that. And that's not it, you know. I think... There's one other person on my feed when I brought up that agrees with me. Everybody else like freaking loves that movie. So uh, I'll be back in my 10, 15 minutes. I have to get something to eat. Okay. Feed the belly. <laughs> Another good session, man. Got the juices flowing. Um, <laughs> yeah, Christopher Walken is definitely interesting. He's he's a loon, man. But he's a fun loon. <laughs> oh man. Great Napoleonic film for you, The Duelist. I know it's on my list. We were going to watch it on set on uh, Saturday, but we had to pay for it. Um, and nobody seemed too thrilled, so I'll probably just watch it on my own. Um, it's got it's Ridley Scott. How bad could it be, right? And everybody seems to like it. I know everybody. I know you guys are just gonna, you know. I, I wish you told me it would suck, but watch it anyways, and then I'd be like, oh, it's pretty freaking good. Instead of be like, it's the most amazing thing. I'll be like, um, I don't know. Harvey Keitel has his weird accent or whatever. You know, I'm expecting to be some kind of a issue with it, but I'll watch the whole thing. <laughs> I bet Harvey Keitel doesn't play it. Doesn't have a French accent, does he? What kind of a Frenchman are you? <laughs> Oh, man. 
<laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, I can't stand these uh, half-assed villains that aren't villainous enough. You know? Villain should be as evil as Stalin, right? You know, pretend he's your friend, but then he's evil too, you know? Any, anybody less evil than Stalin just shouldn't be a villain in, in, a, in a Bond movie. They just shouldn't. Uh, sorry, literally love Barry Lyndon too. Okay. Haven't seen that one either. Haven't seen that one either. Is that one, um, um the stuff that has the, um, Culloden and stuff in it? Is it that time period? 1740s? Or is it a little later? I don't think it's American AWI. I think it's a little earlier than that. I haven't seen it. I haven't avoided it. I just haven't seen it. And I don't mind old movies. I don't mind foreign movies. Okay, I think we're done with that. Let's go to the other one. And you could tell I was being distracted by everybody because I went ahead and put that color that I had no intention of using until now already on here. Oh, well, no big loss. It's just even less, it's even less dry than, it's seven years war. Okay. Okay. So it's uh, 1750s. 1750s, 1760s. Cool. Uh, I tried to watch um, a movie that I happen to like. I've seen it a couple times. I hadn't seen it in a long time. Uh, a very depressing movie. A very depressing movie. Well, I thought the movie was very depressing. Um, was um, Last of the Mohicans. And the battle scenes were just... It's all around. I really enjoyed the movie. I've seen it a couple times. And... Um, should I just show the daughter? Didn't, has not aged well. It wasn't that long ago when it was made. I mean, what is it, 92? Okay, 92 wasn't that long ago. I mean, maybe it was, but I remember 92 very well. So, And I'm not that old, so that's what I qualify as not an old movie. It didn't age well. It looked like something that was filmed like in the early 80s, uh, you know, film quality-wise. I, I don't know, something about it, and it wasn't very captivating. So, Wes Studi as Magua, yep. Yep. Yeah, old turncoat. So I knew a guy who lived here in town who was an extra in that movie. And I'm like, well, where are you? Well, you can't see me. I end up taking a hatchet in that one scene. <laughs> he claims that he was, he was, uh, he was in one of those, uh, whatever. Yeah, Magua. I can never forget what his name is. I didn't know his name was West Studi, but oh yeah, how could we forget Magua? Yeah, he's, I agree. He's a good villain. I agree. And um, just a really depressing movie. Right, one of, the, one of the daughters was going to get sold to him or something like that. And she decided to jump off the cliff. Just like, man, just like, I'd be like, F this, I'm staying in Europe. <laughs> the, the, the hell with these colonies. Although one of my favorite sayings, and, and I don't say it, Often, but one of my favorite sayings, my lasting things, is the quote that the stupid British lieutenant that came over, and you see, like, you know, when he gets asked, you know, you know, you know what we're doing over here, right? And he's like, yeah, we're making the world England. <laughs> I just freaking, I love that saying. <laughs> we're making. I don't know if that's exactly how it is, but it was like, yeah, we're just <laughs> gonna make everything ours. <laughs> we're making the world England. Yeah, I don't think it kind of worked out real well for him, but. <laughs> uh, 
watch that movie. I'm like, F this, I'm staying in Europe. <laughs> uh, semi-related, very looking forward to those Worthington Games Siege Series. One is a Siege of Quebec. Worthington Games, I think, if it's the one I'm thinking of, has some really pretty looking boards. Their boards look very nice. If it's the people that I'm thinking of. Um, I don't mind playing all those board games. I just don't want to learn them on my own. Like, here, teach me how to play this thing, you know? Um, I'm just not interested anymore. That doesn't mean I'm not interested in playing the game correctly. I'm just not interested in starting from square zero. I just, I need to be doing this, you know? So... I don't know. Too many years of playing DBA and trying to figure out rules just kind of burn me out on doing it. I just don't want to be the go-to guy on it. I don't know why I was thinking that. Worthington was one. They made some game that I wasn't even moderately interested in, but it looked really pretty. And not necessarily pretty, but very like succinct. It might have been something on somebody makes a game, and this is a this is a theme that doesn't interest me at all, on Rourke's Drift. And the map is beautiful. It's not overly complicated. It is almost like a military map drawing, and I'm thinking it's Worthington Games. And that's a beautiful, if that's the one, that's a beautiful looking game. You know, it's like the perfect balance of, um, I just, I love it if it's the one I'm thinking of. Uh, some more crunchy, you know, this Worthington used to be played in an hour in solo. Hex game's going to be crazy. I don't think that there's, that's their particular aim. They make a Rourke, somebody, somebody makes a Rourke's Drift game that came out a couple, a couple of years ago and the map is gorgeous. And not, it might be them. I don't know why I thought about that, but. And if Worthington Games is the one that also, I have a game on the iPad that's on, I forget what it's called, but it has, it's on the French Revolution. And it's a solo game, and I've played it a lot. And I don't remember what it's called. I haven't played it a long time ago. And that was a lot of fun. Um, it was on the French Revolution. We have to send armies, and, you know, everybody's coming at you from different zones. And it's a management game, you know. It's a historical management game. And um, I played it quite a bit, whatever the hell it was called. And it was a solo game. It wasn't beautiful looking. It just it, it did what it needed to do. You know, it's called Victoria Cross. So if that's the one it is, it's freaking go It's gorgeous. Well, I don't know if gorgeous is the correct terminology for it. It really looks like the period. Whoever put it together had their head in the right place, you know. And I appreciate stuff like that. Even if it's a game I'm never going to play, I can look at it and go like, yep, that's pretty cool, you know. Um, like those pub battles games. I don't know if you've seen them, the ones that have the little blocks or whatever, and they make like a Napoleonic, they, make, they do Marengo, and they do all this kind of stuff. And I don't know if the game plays worth a damn, but we look at it and like, yeah, it's pretty freaking cool. This is pretty cool, you know? Um, those things are like prohibitively expensive, but hey, sometimes a game just, it all comes together. I'm not opposed to board games as long as they're historical because it gets my juices flowing to learn about history. I mean, that's ultimately why I'm doing this, is to learn about this stuff, you know? Otherwise, I'd just play fantasy, you know? So it doesn't matter that it's a board game, as long as it doesn't look like Catan. <laughs> oh, man. How does Watkins look so appropriately drab and good at the same time? I don't know. I'm I I'm I get a thrill out of doing that though. Um, same thing with my Irish. My Irish are drab and they're not drab. You know that's why. Just wait till I get some pre feudal Scots out here, man. You're gonna make you salivate. Same thing. They gotta be boring. It's, 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 tiny spots of color just in the right place. 
I'm going to really enjoy doing that. I mean, anybody can sit around and paint Romans that are colorful. or that, that's, that's the reason to not do Byzantines next, because the Byzantines are going to be colorful-ish. And, um, but making something drab but interesting at the same time is a lot of freaking fun. You know, I enjoy it anyways. Like I said, I love my, I love my Irish. Love them. And they're even more drab than these guys because I got to use that ugly ass yellow in a lot of this stuff. But you don't, not, not everybody's the same color. You got to mix it a little bit. Sometimes mix it with dark brown. Sometimes mix it with black. Stop at different levels. Bring it highlighted at different, you know, tinker with all that stuff. And, you know, I think it, I, I've enjoyed it a lot. I have the Decision Games Marengo game, 15 bucks, but it's counter very quick. She got back to the Ministry of Air Board Games, thinking to make my own pieces, kind of spiraled. I love Marikian Nikephorian. 1,000 was a good year for fisticuffs. Yeah. I would skip the Nikephorian one only because they don't fall in the period where we have enemies for them. So I've got the Justinian guys, the Justinian through, uh, well, the Marikian would be okay. Uh, Heraclean, and then stop there and then roll into the, um, the Crusades period ones. Not that I have anything against Nikephorius, just for the enemies that we currently have, it would make sense to do that. Been wanting to pull out my Byzantine figures. I almost did last week and started looking through them, but. I'm, I'm enjoying painting a lot lately, so. We're getting a lot of stuff done. It takes a while, but, you know, you just have to paint often. The only way I'm going to get more production done is paint more often. Not cutting corners. I'm going to get unsatisfied how they look and then that's going to cause me to say F it I'm going to go play a video game and not paint anything because the worst thing I can do as a painter is not be happy with the results if I'm not happy with the results I'm going to stop I'm just going to stop and it hasn't happened yet but not my first rodeo either so that's the thing about experience I tell people it's you realize that you're going in the wrong direction, you know, so maybe you'll try like a, you're starting to paint something and it's starting to turn in a different direction. You're like, nope, nope. If I keep going down this road, I'm not going to be happy with the results. The Empire Strikes Back. I can make all the joys. I can make all the jokes about the Byzantines and little boys. <laughs> Rus, we have no Rus. We have no Rus. And I have Ostrogoths, so I definitely am interested. I mean, I mean, other than like maybe 20 armies, I'm interested in all the armies. I mean, to be honest with you. Only about 20, which sounds like a lot, but, you know. It's really not that many when there's 570 or whatever of them. Um, a slight wash on these rocks to make them pop a little bit. And then we'll get a, oh, I don't need a refill. We got the little bit, we got the watered down tea. Well, we'll paint the edge in black. We've got to wait a little bit before we do the grass because we don't want the grass sticking to the rocks. That's just stupid looking. We don't want that. That's another one of those things. You can't use, you can't call things stupid. Mm, you can't, but I can. <laughs> There's lots of stuff that's stupid. All right. I think that's good for now. All right, let's get the black. I did buy a new black. Because I keep making a mess with the old one. But I think I'm going to run the old one out until it can't do it anymore. Uh, 
does it switch over to another army when the first crusade rolls around? Yeah, it switches to... It Manzikert. It It actually... See if I can go. I see if I can go off memory. So it starts with the early Byzantines, which splits into two versions and runs through. Um, you know, it's the whole um, Belisarius, Belisarius, Narses thing, and then it runs into. Um, I want to say it runs into Heraclius. I think there's a Heraclius list. I could be wrong. It might be the Marikian one. Because who was... Was Heraclius after Maurice? I can't remember. Anyway, so there's a there's a Mar Marikian, Mauritian list. Okay? And then it goes into thematic. And thematic is really long. Thematic runs like... 700 to almost 9. And then there's the Nikephorian list that runs from like 9 till like 1050. And then from 1050 to like 1071, there's the Constantinian one, which is just basically them getting their ass kicked at Man Manzikert. And then it gets, and then it gets redone uh, in what they call the... Um, I can't remember. It's getting bad, man. I need to take some memory stuff. I'm not practicing this stuff all the time. so. Uh, but anyways, the one that... Um, the Crusades one with, uh, with what's-his-face. Komnenen. That's what it is. The Komnenen has two versions that run until, um, until the Venetians screw with Constantinople. And, you know, create that mess, which eventually leads to its downfall. Um, but the thematic one is really, really long. Well, the thematic army is extremely mounted. It's, it's a lot of it is mounted. They had, like, not enough foot. The Byzantines tend to be heavy on the mounted anyways. Um, but there's, like, no foot in the, um, in the thematic army. And um, that's at least the way Barker organizes it. You're back. You have a shed load of knights to fight Lombard, Normans, and Arabs, but pre-Seljuk. Yeah, it's the thematic. Thematic are the ones that are around for a really long time. That list. Again, according to Barker, because different people call them different things. Um, I want to say one of the other rule sets has... A Marican and a Heraclean list. Um, I really wish the Persian list would be a little bit better because that whole Heraclius and what was the name of the guy that you know, this is the thing about history. It's like you learn about stuff you didn't know about. Like I didn't know that the Persians went in and because that back and forth between the Persians, towards the end, I mean, there was always back and forth. But I'm talking like in the, in the 540s and stuff. I mean, the Persians went and took Egypt. Like, I had no idea that they went and took that. I mean, they didn't, it didn't, they didn't hold it for very long, but they still, they had that one general that was a badass named Shahar Bazad or something like that. Yeah, so he was over there and Heraclius is like, well, I'm not going to fight him over there. I'm going after the, the capital. And they had to pull him out and he came back. And it's just... Really, really interesting stuff, you know. And um, Mitch has Persians. I have Ostrogoths. Um, what other enemies of them? He's got Umayyad. Um, of course, there's lots of Crusade stuff. I was going to build the... Um, A Crusades period Byzantine army, but I think I may need to do the earlier ones sooner because I I personally own the enemy of them. I own the Ostrogoths, so it would make sense to do that one first. Um, but we'll see. We shall see.
Anyone want tacos? I'll take a taco. Tacos are like hot dogs. Want to know where I'm going with this? Oh, here we go. Hold on one second. Hold that thought. Okay, we got the 30 minute thing. I'm gonna watch the, some TV with the daughter. She's working on schoolwork. Um, okay, hot dogs are like tacos. Um, they're things you can make at home much better than you can have out. And we're, we're just talking generic tacos, okay? We're not talking about, you know, fancy ones that are like uh, um, shrimp tacos or something like that, okay? We're talking about like Taco Bell tacos, right? The standard Tex-Mex fare or, you know, old El Paso if you're making them at home. So the things you can make at home, uh, for those, those of you that are in Europe, you don't know what the hell I'm talking about. I, I get it, okay? But... <laughs> um, Hot dogs and tacos, you can both make, you you can have them at home or you can have them out. When you make them at home, they're infinitely better and infinitely cheaper than they are out. So they're like things that I don't dislike either one of them, but I just don't think of going out, you know. Like I go to, I don't go to Taco Bell, for instance, because if we use ground beef, it is not that quality ground beef that they have there. It's just, it looks nasty, to be honest with you. You can have, hey, at least it doesn't have ketchup on it, okay. But, um, like, for instance, you, you could buy a pack of really good quality hot dogs, and they're like, um, what are they? Well, I haven't bought them in a long time. They're under $8. You buy hot dogs by themselves, and they're $8 for one. I'm not going to eat one friggin' hot dog. You know, I'm going to have two or three. You know, so just not cost effective to, to have them out. So, you made generic soft shell with hamburger and cheese. Yeah, anytime we buy ground beef, we buy we, we buy the lean stuff. We don't buy the, you know, nasty stuff. Once you get used to having some of that better stuff, like I can't I can't tolerate the grease and ooh. Anyhow, you enjoy your taco. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then when my wife makes those Tex Mex tacos or whatever. It's everything in, in me not to eat eight of them. I mean, they're they're freaking amazing. That actually never gets old. I never that that, that Tex Mex flavor never gets old for me. I don't like fast food at all that much. Just give me pasta and veg or a steak and salad. Yeah. Yeah, they're always saying, "How do you cut people from eating fast food?" You know how you do it? You ban drive-through windows. Well, I'm not, a, I'm not a favor of banning anything, but, you know, that would do it for me. That would do it for me. Well, we'll be painting tomorrow night, too, so looks like I'm not going to make it to Dracula tonight at the rate I'm going. But we will tomorrow. And he's the first one up. He's got to set the pace of everything. Of that stand. He's mostly going to be black and red. Just so you know. We need this to dry a little bit. Did I not make a mess with black? Holy cow. Well, that'll never happen again. I don't make messes at all. So when I make one, it's like, well, you know, I don't want to have to stop and clean things up. And you can transfer it over to a painted figure. I don't want to do that. I don't want to have to undo whatever I've done with these folks. 
You know, we need to keep moving forward, going back and fixing things. That's not how you get more armies painted. You've never eaten Taco Bell. Yeah, I like that food. I just don't want to be made by them. <laughs> I want my body to decompose naturally, thanks. No, I need to drive through windows for my midnight Taco Bell runs. Oh, man. If I eat at midnight, I have to stay up till 4. Only fast food I order in or pick up is pizza. Because I can't make pizza better than a pizza place. Isn't that the truth? I can't either. And if you did, it would just cost a fortune. And you have to heat up your damn house, too, with that oven. I'm not the most... I am not the most government-minded person. Me neither. But I think it's atrocious that in some areas you can get a couple of bags of chips cheaper than a bag of potatoes. That's true. That's true. All right. You guys dry yet? <laughs> Look at the front of the stand. This magnet's like bubbling up. I've never had that happen before, ever. I wonder if there's like a tiny... If there was maybe like a piece, I'm not going to say a piece of dust, but if there was something on there that kept it from, yeah, I think it is. I think that's what it is. That little piece right there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put this back on. And if it doesn't grip properly, we'll just put a bit new magnet on there. I've never had to do this before, ever. You know what? I don't want the front showing, so I'm going to flip it. It still seems like it's plenty sticky enough. We don't edit anything here, man. If I run into adversity, you guys get to see it and see how I deal with it. Now, I think that did it. All right, let's do the test. Hello. Okay, they're good. All right. <laughs> That's what it was. It was that like one piece there that was was kept popping the front of it down. Kept popping the front down. You know what? Because I'm a completist. For good measure, I'm going to give it another coat so that it's, it matches evenly on that. Never had that happen in all the stands. Hey, if I experience problems, you guys are going to see them. Yeah, that one seems good. All right, now to dry. The smiter of adversity. Well, at least in the in the painting world. Uh, Rick, we want you around for a long time. Buy an instant pot and let it do the cooking. <laughs> My friend has a home pizza oven. It's crazy. Half a nation's problems vanish when people swap out one meal for oats, another for a bowl of veg. They can still have burgers, but geez. Yeah, I have no problem with vegetables. 
I don't cook worth a damn. Actually, I have a salad every day. I have a big salad. Got to get my olive oil in. Uh, I'm getting pretty lazy, though. I eat cheese, tomato, avocado, toasties. Uh, in lieu of cooking, because it's too darn humid. I find it very reassuring that you occasionally screw up. Yeah, we all screw up. You guys watch these pros? Oh, I never make a mistake. I'll never own up to them. No, you just... You got to learn how to fix your stuff, you know? It's still sticky. Seems like great candidate for that's what she said. Yeah, there you go. That's what she said. I guess that's from The Office, but I remember from the 80s. So, I can cook a cheesy gordita crunch in an Instapot. <laughs> One thing I hate about a lot of model builders on YouTube... You never see them make mistakes and what they do to overcome the mistake. No idea, but I do know is that I can grab my keys and have one in 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah, I'm scared of their ground beef. I'll be honest with you. I go to the store and I buy that ground beef that's 93 93% and 7. 7% fat, 93% lean. I, I can't have anything more than that. That's just... The idea of it is just like... Oof. Fat enough as it is. I don't need to get any fatter. All right. Let's get all our uh, candidates for things that we need out here. We're going to need... Lay sprinkles. Um, we're going to need... Elmer's glue, or is like you guys like to call it across the pond, PVA. Um, and some tuftage. So do we have any big spaces there? Because if we don't, then we don't need any big tuftage. We'll use two of these moss ones. Oh, I gotta put my glasses on so I can see. Sometimes I gotta put my glasses on, take them off so I can see. This time I have to put them on so I can see. It's farther away. Uh, it's amazing how the little ones are more useful. Well, you can make little ones out of the big ones, but I try not to do that unless I have to. There's another one. It's a fast hoard, so it's got more empty space in it. A solid hoard on there. And then where is the... Oh, there's already one of them out here. That'll work. We'll only use one of these. The Swamp Tufts. There. That's the potential tuft candidates for for this army. What's the THC content of that? You're asking the wrong guy. You're asking the wrong guy. I have no freaking idea. I have no idea. I learned everything I know about drugs from watching Narcos Mexico. That's it. If I hadn't watched that, I wouldn't know shit. Reckon we've accumulated some good karma. I give away a lot of stuff, Rick. Please send the magical Mickey Mouse broom. <laughs> I kind of undo my karma by being grumpy, though. Well, you wouldn't be so grumpy if people weren't such a pain in the ass. I get it. It's not your fault. They do it to themselves. <laughs> I feel like I feel like Clint Eastwood and what's that movie? Grand Torino when he's sitting at the he's sitting on the uh, on the porch with that frown on his face. <laughs> Cause the world's changed and left them behind. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. Maybe not about the stuff that he's upset with in that movie, but, you know. <laughs> oh, man. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right. Did the edge of the stand dry? Kind of. We don't want any grass on the edge. Well, we'll have to see what else you got here. This is what I come here for. <laughs> uh, if there were other people, I would not be so grumpy. Yeah. Grand Torino is an excellent movie. Saw it one time. Yeah.
Yeah, I washed out with my mom. Didn't know my mom had a thing for Clint Eastwood. Okay. I got to watch my shoot 'em up stuff with her because my wife is a terrible movie watcher. She won't watch any of the shoot 'em up things. Although I've never seen the Dirty Harry stuff. I probably don't want to watch it. It's probably too dated by, by today's standards. I couldn't imagine being Grand Torino being me. How old's the movie? The movie's only like four years old, isn't it? What's happened in the last four years? I'm still the same. I haven't changed. I'm not going to change either. They can bury me in the ground. I'll be the same person. <laughs> How old is Gran Torino? Can't be older than 2015, could it? Ah, oh, you're going to make me look. Gran Torino. 2008? What? Well, 2008 was the other day. What changed since 2008? Kurosan does Dirty Harry figures? They do? Just watched Return to Lonesome Dove last night, and it's really, really good. I grew up watching westerns. I didn't. I've only seen maybe five westerns of my entire life. It's just not a plot that interests me. Wow. 2008 doesn't seem like 14 years ago. It seems like, oh yeah, last year. That much has changed in society since 2008, right? Wow. Well, I'm the same person I've always been. I was already playing DBA. I was already playing DBA armies. That was just the other day. Westerns that I've seen. Tombstone, obviously. I saw that in the movie theater. I can't think of them. I can't think of them. I did see Unforgiven not that long ago. Didn't love it. Um, it's just... It's just... I didn't grow up watching that stuff. I grew up watching war movies. So... And a lot of it is, you know... A, a lot of... A lot of what you had is shaped by father figures. And my father did not watch westerns. So... Um, that has something to do with it, you know. Um... You, what you watch is is, is uh, shaped by father figures if he's around. <laughs> Mine was so. <laughs> Mine was all historical stuff and you know, the old classics and but westerns just wasn't one of them. He didn't really grow up watching westerns either, so um, that's the only reason. Um, Tombstone's great. Love that movie. So many great lines in it. Yeah, well, I pretty, I like um, Kurt Russell. I'll watch Kurt Russell anything. It feels like a lifetime ago. Not that we nineteen. I I don't feel like it was a lifetime ago when I was nineteen. And that would have been nineteen ninety. Ninety one. Nineteen ninety one. I remember 1991 like it was yesterday. Grandfather was a huge Western fan. That's going to shape you, you know? Yeah, yeah, you, you're going to be, you know, you're going to get used to that. You're going to get used to that. I can't think of the westerns I've seen. I want to say I saw one of them I really liked, and I don't know which one it was, and it wasn't one I've mentioned. I could be wrong. Oh, that's right. It was Hateful Eight. 
<laughs> oh man. <laughs> I get hateful aid, and what was the other one? And Django. I get those two mixed up because they're both what's his name movies, and they're both in another period. And oh, his movies are crazy. Who's up for watching Big Trouble in Little China with Kurt Russell? You know, I watched that movie long after. I didn't see that movie. It's, that movie's from 1986, right? I didn't see that movie until the 90s. And I didn't love it. I mean, everybody has high things about that, but... Um, Yeah, I want to watch. Um, I've seen Escape from New York and don't remember Jack about it. So I want to watch that one and the L.A. one back to back. But I don't remember anything about the New York one at all. It's a rainy week, lads. Send me your energy. My spine is giving me grief, but I want to put money where my mouth is and get some dudes painted. There you go. Mr. Kevin, welcome from Arizona, Stan. Okay, I think we're good to do this now. All right, so this is what we do with this. I find places that I've boogered up or that I don't enjoy how it looks very much. So we go in there. It usually involves putting this grass between their legs. This grass, which THC content, I do not know. <laughs> God, I don't know. I don't know anything about drugs. I don't know any. It's funny, though. I was on a cruise, and we were talking about liquor, and the guy goes like, man, how do you know so much about liquor? I'm like, how do you not? I mean, I think it's interesting. I don't drink that much, but I think it's very interesting, you know? But I was probably talking to somebody who's, you know, their idea of drinking is, you know, whatever's in a can and cheap, you know? The Goonies. I wasn't a Goonies lover. Sorry, every, every movie from the 80s sucks compared to Back to the Future and Raiders of the Lost Ark. Um, those two are classics. And I still, I still haven't seen the third Back to the Future movie. I don't know why, I just, I haven't. I know it probably sucks, but I need to watch it. I mean, the first one's freaking classic. Raiders is such a freaking good movie. And I was watching part of it the other day. It's, and it aged, ages well. Like some movies are just like, oh my God, this looks so ancient or whatever. Howard the Duck. Never seen it. Can you watch Raiders of the Lost Ark and Back to the Future? I have them both on DVD. Ha! Excellent. Excellent movies, man. Was it in love with Watts from John Hughes? Some kind of wonderful. He wasn't in love, huh? I have a huge pile, but I just want to dig out a bag of Demon World Elves and Demon World Undead. Those were going for a pretty penny before they put them back in the, on the market. People were like dying for to get those. And then I forget somebody put them back on the molds. Or as I like to call them, their games workshop in 15 millimeter. That's what kind of what they look like. Well, kind of at the time, they kind of looked that way. Um, they don't so much now. But, um, man, those were going for a pretty penny when they discontinued them. I forget who carries them. Is it Rao Partha Europe? Rao Partha Europe or something like that that carries them? They're definitely some unique looking figures.
And just out of a miracle, actually, I saw Raiders of the Lost Ark on, and didn't know what the movie was about. I ended up going with some neighbor kid. I had no idea what was on it. All I know is, yeah, the Han Solo guy's in it. Okay, I don't know. I, I, I hear Raiders of the Lost Ark. I'm like, what, Noah's Ark? I mean, that's the Ark I'm thinking of. I don't know about any other Ark and, you know. <laughs> but I saw that in the movie theater when it came out, so. <laughs> oh, man. Used to game with one of the owners of Rao Partha. Huh. Isn't E.T. an 80s movie? It is. 82, 83? One of those two years. Now you want to watch Home Alone. Is Home Alone an 80s movie? I thought it was a 90s movie. Huh. And there were some... There were some horrible movies in the 80s. Let's... Well, there's horrible movies... All the time. They, they make it real easy to keep making bad ones. But another movie that's great from the 80s is Big. Big is a great movie. Uh, don't tell me how good since I don't experience it myself. They're remaking a lot of the old 80s films. Flight of the Navigator, for example. Is that the one where they... Is that the one where they use an old B-29? Why do I feel like that's the movie? They, they used a B-29 to get it flying or something like that. I don't know. Maybe I'm getting movies that I've never, that I haven't thought about since I've left the movie theater mixed up with each other. <laughs> I just honestly just forget to watch movies. Cause like the other day I was like looking through stuff and I'm like, a movie that I always wanted to see you know, when I was a kid, I never got to see was Willow. And Willow may suck, but it's a movie that uh, that um, I've always wanted to see. And um, Speaking of movies that are bad from the 80s, I saw this movie. I didn't see it when it came out because... Um, I watched something else in the movie theater at the time. You know, when you're a kid, you didn't go to the movie theater all the time. You went, you know, not that often. It wasn't like we were made of money or anything like that. But um, I saw it with a friend of mine in the 90s. And man, I almost had to put a diaper on for peeing myself. And I don't know if it would be that funny now. But, you know, you never, you know, when you watch a movie and you watch it with the right person, you know, and you just get each other rolling. And that movie was top secret. And top secret was freaking hilarious as shit. Unbelievably hilarious at the time. Um, there's and yes, it's stupid, but that was some funny crap. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> Dude. You like Willow. Hadn't seen it in 30 years. Found that on Disney+. Plus. That, so that's where it is. That's why I reserved it. I need to watch that. Yeah. I need to watch that. <laughs> Time Bandits. Remember Time Bandits? Time Bandits. Willow reminded me, reminded me of Midgets. We didn't call them little people. We call them freaking midgets. And they just dealt with it. We didn't hate them. We just, that's what we called them. They didn't get the ACLU out and want to sue everybody. We just called them midgets. Two Godzilla movies in the 80s. Really? This taco saga has more twists than M. Night Shining on film. I remember seeing grumpy old men in a theater and I was the youngest person there. I laughed myself stupid. <laughs> grumpy old men. Is that an 80s movie? I don't remember anything about it. I've seen it. I'll tell you what was an 80s movie and was hilarious was Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. That was a funny freaking movie. 
And yes, and I believe the number of the counting is 24. That's how many MFs he dropped in a row. Because I remember going back and watching it and counting every damn one of them. And that was, I don't know, 30 years ago when I watched it, or maybe even longer. I, God, what is it? That's like a 92 movie or something like that? Maybe it's not an 80s movie. Maybe it's an 88 movie. I don't know. Planes, trains, and automobiles. I don't think I was 17 yet to see it. Or maybe I was. Those aren't pillows. How can one forget that? <laughs> oh, man. It's a 90s movie? Haven't seen Time Bandits in a long, long time. Yeah, how's that line go? Don't touch that. That's pure evil. One drop of that and it'll turn you all into toads or something like that. Pure, un... Tamed evil. I forget exactly what the line is, but yeah. Top secret, man. That one scene, that one scene where the scientist is working on the lab, and it's it's in like the middle of a dungeon, right? And and he's working on this mine, and he goes, "What's this do? No, don't touch that!" And it arms the freaking mine. It was an anti-submarine mine, and cut to the next scene. This submarine comes crashing through the freaking wall and the hatch opens like, what the fuck are we doing in the middle of the comet? <laughs> that kind of stuff, man. It's stupid. When you see it with the right person, you better make sure you put a diaper on because, you know, it's going to be a wet one. It's going to be funny, 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 funny. That kind of stuff. Stupid humor. That's the kind of stuff that just makes you feel better. It's therapeutic. Batman. Even with the Prince soundtrack? <laughs> that was 89. That was October of 89. I remember because my dad was having surgery at that time and went across the theater, across the across the, when he was recovering, we took a break and went over there to watch that. October 1989. Yeah. All right. Some of this came off. Do we need to tinker with any more of it? Yeah, let's go ahead and put some under here. Sometimes you watch something with the right person, it makes all it makes all the difference in the world. You just get each other going. I watched a movie recently that nobody seems to like except Mitch and I. I started watching it. I'd heard about this movie, and the concept of the movie was really interesting. I started watching it. Five minutes in, or maybe it was three minutes in, I stopped. I'm like, no, I can't watch the rest of the movie. I have to save this for Mitch. We went and saw it. It was one of the, It's one of the funniest things I've seen in probably 20 years, in the last 20 years. What movie is that? Hardcore Henry. Now, Hardcore Henry is a movie. It's probably like a B movie. That's all shot like a first-person shooter. It is absolutely hilarious. Because if you've played first-person shooters, you've done all that stuff before. But the comedy in it is freaking gold. It's just hilarious stuff. Um, if you're a first-person shooter and you have a sixth sense of humor, yeah, go watch that. It might be available free. <laughs> oh, man. Man, we laughed. Oh, my gosh, we laughed. There's this one scene involving a shotgun where they broke, break open the door and it was just like, I've done that. Oh, this is what it looks like in movie form. Excellent. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, shot based on Nicholas. This movie is pretty good. I watched Signs the other night. I actually got around to watching um, The Village the other day. The other day, a couple months ago. And I, the plot had already been ruined for me. And um, that's a movie I would not have watched if I didn't know what the plot was. Because it's just too creepy. You know, because I don't do, ma I don't do masks. Like, I have a problem with demonic type masks. Like, no. 
you know, puts ideas in your head. Not clown masks. Clowns are freaking clowns, okay? I'm talking about demon shit, okay? Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have watched that. But since I knew how it ended, uh, and it was still kind of a bit creepy, but yeah, I can't imagine watching that in a the movie theater and not know the twist. Woo! That would have been a that would have been a a, a mind. You know what? All right. Let's get to Tufflandia. We're going to put one. We're going to put the big moss here. That's the, this new material, this Viejo, is as good, and in some ways it's better than the Liquitex. In the way that it is worse is that it is a lot harder than the Liquitex. So normally with the Liquitex, I would take this and I could squish it into it. And you can't with this as much. So, got to have some gripe about it. So, now this big old thing, does it fit in here all right? No, I'm going to have to trim it down if I want it there. All right, let's trim it down. Or do I have a smaller one that would work? This one. Yeah, I'm not dead set on it. A certain color being a certain place. Yeah, that watching that the watching that in the movie theater and have that twist, wow. But I'm not one to read ahead. Oh, the the two girls at the house, they'll be like, "Well, I saw that coming," you know, to movies, and I'm like, "Why are you just enjoying a movie?" They're always like trying to figure it out and already figure things out before it happens and. You guys want to see something with a twist? There's a series on Netflix called Black Mirror. And there's a couple episodes that are pretty good. It's actually a pretty interesting show. They're like mini movies. They're like... Um, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. And it's science fiction. And uh, there's one episode in season two or three called White Bear that's amazing. I've shown it to like three or four people, and it is really, really good. So check that out. And if you don't like it, then I didn't send you there. <laughs> uh, Ice Pirates. I've never seen Ice Pirates. Uh, I saw an American haunting in theaters, and there's a scene where the candles erupt in flames. At that point, I opened a bottle of soda and exploded as the candles burst <laughs> into flames in the movie. Holy shit. Almost walked out of the movie. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't watch haunting stuff. I don't believe in that crap, and I don't need to start believing in that crap. So I just we'll just ignore that bullshit. I started. Somebody I knew was telling me about American Horror Story was really good. So I started watching one of the episodes. Yeah, I stopped. I'm like, no, this is. I, I don't need to. I don't need to think about this kind of crap. Because I don't watch supernatural things. I can handle all the terrorists and, and murders and stuff in the world, but none of that demonic supernatural crap. All right, we're going to take this guy and we're going to cut his ass in two. The movie was trying to tell you something. What are the odds? One in one, it happened. <laughs> yeah, I don't believe in none of that crap and don't need to start. So. Ah, 
Aha, you're going to be obstinate. All right, we need a helper. The problem is just pulling it with him, so hold it down while I get that guy out of the way. There we go. Never had a tough come off. You know, the thing is, is they're usually in places that you don't touch anyways. So, they're kind of off the beaten path. Well, I wanted to bend that around that rock. Okay. You're going to be like that, huh? All right, you son of a bitch. Ha! All right. I don't know that I need this other half. Let's just take this little, the mossy bit. Put them there. So we've got a couple of unboxings that should happen this week. We've got some figures coming from Essex. And we got a, some brushes. I've been talking about getting sourced out. I found some brushes on Amazon, believe it or not, that are actually made in the USA. So we'll do a review on them. Hopefully they won't arrive both on the same day because I'm not going to do two unboxings on the same day. You guys just have to wait. Well, I'll still do the video. I'm just not going to post them both on the same day. You just have to wait a day. So Essex figures were ordered first, so they'll get priority if they show up on the on that day, which is when they'll probably show up because Essex is almost without a fault. You order something on a, if it gets shipped out on a Wednesday, you'll get it the next Wednesday. But there was a, you know, there was a holiday today, so I don't know if that messed anything up. So, uh, I hate those movies that believe gross is scary. Once did a classic elbow into the nacho cheese in the theater. I love white. I love black. Black is fat man white. I used to wear a white t-shirt frequently, but that was in my 20s. I need camouflage. Okay, so this guy's done. Oh, it looks like crap. I don't know why it looks that garbage. Focus-wise. Anyways, we'll post pictures of them. So, they're done. Is it because it's too far away or the lighting's just not right or something? They're done along with Uncle Artie. Oh, it just looks terrible on here. I'm not impressed. So, they look great in person, just the video camera doesn't look. And they, and they pick paint up just fine. So now we've got 13 elements and the army's still not done. And we've got light horse, light horse. Yeah, don't put the light horse in front of the artillery piece. Hey, it's just to show you what we got here. A couple more Saloy. Couple of fast bows. Couple more Saloy. Couple more Saloy. An extremely light army. Now these are interchangeable. So if you use the fast horde, you can't use the artillery piece. Like, talk about a crapshoot. So most of the time, they're going to be using the artillery piece. If I just run an event like Fast and Furious where you have to have fast elements only, artillery piece stays home. Okay, but most of the time I'm going to have to use the artillery piece, uh, I would imagine. And then we need these guys, of course. This is the Cav General. So next outing we will have, we'll be painting Mr. Vlad Dracul himself. 
his attendants can go afterwards. And then that'll be complete. Then we'll do the camp. We'll have the, impa the impaled camp figures. And um, which we'll have a forest full of them. Eh. A small copse of woods, you know. And, uh, and then we will do um, the Moldavian commander. Then we'll worry about Polish allies. So that's what we got planned out, you know, in the, uh, in the future. So, anyways, 13 stands done and the army's not complete. So, it's a very light army. It's even lighter than the Irish. So, um, but they've got missile weapons, unlike the Irish. So, I guess the Irish can have them. I just haven't painted them yet. The Scots Bowmans and stuff like that. So, anyways, to be continued, next step will be uh, Mr. Vlad himself, right here. So, he's, he's going to take a little bit of time to paint because he's got all the accoutrements. He's got a sword out. He has a bow with a bow case and a, and a quiver. And, you know, he's got all kinds of stuff. So he's mostly going to be black and red. And um, that'll be the next guy that we work when uh, we continue painting tomorrow. So thanks for coming by, folks. As always, happy painting. And um, we'll catch you guys next time. Bye-bye.